Hello and welcome to the third edition of Maths in Isolation. This one has got to do with the volume of Mauler. Yes, Play-Doh, blue tack, whatever you want. All you need is some sort of ball of such. Okay, this is for the volume experiment where one volume becomes another. A lot of you had trouble with this question and so I'm going over it again. Basically, what is the volume of this sphere? And then if I turn this sphere into a cylinder, what's the new volume of the cylinder? It's the same as the volume of the sphere because it's the same piece of molar. So we can work out some dimension of the cylinder and try to predict what that value is. So first of all, I have to find the diameter of the molar, and I work out that this is two and a half centimetres. That, from that, I should be able to find the volume of the sphere. So here we go with the magic hands calculation. I've got a diameter of 2.5 centimetres, which gives us a radius of 1.25. Let's just divide it in half, of course. We look up the log tables and we find this formula for the sphere. So we rewrite the formula out with the radius in instead of the R and do the calculator, which I did offset, and we get the volume of, there we go. Now I'm going to change the sphere into a cylinder. It's the same sphere. I roll it flat on my hand, turning it into something about the size of a cork. Flatten the ends to make it a proper cylinder. There you go. So it comes out that size. Now the volume of that cylinder has to be the same as the sphere because it's the same piece of material. So what I need to do is predict the height of the sphere from the radius. So I'm going to flatten down the edges as much as possible to turn it into a true sphere so I don't get these rolled edges. There you go, that's me flattening them off. Just pinching them, you see, pinching them. Oh, so this is it. I'm pinching it around, making it into a nice one. Yeah, yeah. close-up shots. I'm getting very professional. Now I'm going to measure it. There you are. Take up the ruler. I even found the one you could see through. How clever is that? 1.7 centimetres. And that's the figure we're going to use. Now, now I'm going to try and calculate the length of the sphere. Now, a cylinder looks like that. So you look in the log tables for something that looks like that and you find the formula for the volume of the cylinder, which is written next to the letter V. Not surprisingly, that's it, pi r squared h. Now, the volume is the same, so we write the volume down and then the formula again, but we replace the r, of course, with the correct value we've just measured. If 1.7 centimetres, then it's 0.85. Now, I just have to manipulate the formula a little bit, which means I have to move the pi and the bracket 0.85 squared underneath there, you see? I do the calculation and it comes out as 2.85 centimetres. Brilliant, absolutely, complete. I don't know, we don't have to do it anymore. Yeah, that is exactly 2.5 centimetres. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with that. So let's measure the length and see if we're correct. Yes, we are. Okay, it's 2.9, close enough. Like you, to get some molar and to repeat this experiment. Go from sphere to cylinder, and then finally, and this is for yourself, I'm not gonna do this, I want you to try it, go from cylinder to cone, and see if you can predict the height of the cone measuring the radius using the same technique. And if you are successful, try and get more molar, or if you can't find any more molar and you already had a very big ball, cut the molar in half, roughly, Find the new volume of the sphere, the new cylinder height by measuring the radius, and finally the cone. Enjoy. It's a lot easier than the last one I set you. I want everybody doing this one, please. Thanks.